Hi, welcome to Free. I'm Geraldine, and today we're going to talk about listening for TOEFL and IELTS. Probably the most challenging part of taking these exams is the listening part. Has it happened to you? I believe that this is because we as students have learned based on a textbook and based on grammar. So what we learned was basically read. And when we learned vocabulary, it was basically words. So two things happened. First, that we learned to recognize the words written. And second, that we have learned about these words isolated. But what happens with the listening? That there's nothing to read. There's no visual aid for us. So all you can do is listen. And that is the first challenge. Sometimes it's difficult to associate what you hear to a particular word because we didn't study the pronunciation precisely. That is one. And then the second, we studied this word isolated. Maybe, maybe we even know the pronunciation of it. But when it's in context, we lose it. It, it gets lost between all the other sounds that are happening around them. So I'm going to tell you what I did when I was a student and then when I was a teacher. When I was studying and I was probably at the pre-intermediate level, that is finishing the basic level or starting the intermediate level, I realized that listening was a weakness. I felt very comfortable speaking, really. Uh, but with the listening, no, I couldn't hear everything. You know how they tell you in the listening exercises that you shouldn't worry about getting every single detail, but to getting the whole idea? Well, I got the whole idea, but I needed to understand every little detail. That's what I wanted. That's what I felt I needed. So when I was studying, well, we had you know access to the laboratory, to the materials that we had, the, the audios of the listening, because in the... In an English program, you have a listening part, but those English programs aren't focused on the listening part. The listening part is, right now we're going to listen, so pay attention to the keywords, to some skills, etc. But it's like a, a five minute, a 10 minute thing, that's it. So I went to, to the lab and I put on my headphones and I will hear those audios again. So I, I ran out of audios, really, because there weren't many. So I started um, listening to the forthcoming audios, to the audios that we were going to see in class later. They were short ones. And you could say I cheated because I heard them before the class. But again, and any anybody, everybody had access to that, but only I went to check that material. So what did I do? What I did was to um, listen and I wouldn't even do the exercises from the book. Uh, I would just transcribe. They weren't very long, so I could just, you know, stop and I had my notebook there and I would transcribe all the conversation, all the audio. Obviously, I didn't get everything at first. I had to replay and replay everything five times, 10 times, 20 times, sometimes when there was something that I didn't get, there was like one thing, one thing, that, that small chunk that I didn't get. And later in class, I would ask the teacher to confirm if that was exactly what I had written. I felt it helped me. But it wasn't that I did it once, something that I started doing continuously when I had some time, like to spend 30 minutes doing that. And in one of those, something very interesting happened. I was listening to an audio and, you know, transcribing as usual, and there was this part that I didn't get. And I kept listening because there's something that, you know, happens with your brain that at first you hear, ah, you're, you play the audio and it seems like they're saying nothing. They're making just weird noises. For example, if you hear da da and you're like, da 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 no idea what that is. And you keep playing it, you know, once, twice, 
five times, ten times, da da da, da da da, da da da, but I know there's something there. And you keep hearing, maybe the hundredth time, you will hear, after all. Oh, after all, after all, after all, after all, whatever. But your brain does something that you don't realize, but it happens. So it takes a lot of perseverance. It takes a lot of patience. It happens, you get there. And what happened in this particular activity or this particular listening, I couldn't hear this word. It was like, right now I don't remember what I heard, but it was something like, the lesson, the lesson, the lesson. And I cannot tell you how many times I heard it because I heard it many times. I heard it so many times. I kept hearing, hearing, hearing and nothing. I had to give up. Yes, I gave up. And then went to class. This uh, listening was about movies. So here, the importance not only of listening, but of the context of the background knowledge you have. This was a movie and they talked about this character and it was like da da da. And I was like, please tell me, asking the teacher, right? What do they say there? Because I can't get it. And this the blossom, the blossom that I heard, this the blossom, the blossom, whatever what, that I heard, it was, oh, he was a truly 007. It was 007. It referred to the 007 agent that of course I had no idea that was the way they called him in, in English because in Spanish we call it in a different way because it's a different way of, of reading the numbers and it was so clear 007 yeah 007 007 oh, 007 but these three words were all together 007 so that if you like had no context it was difficult to get and that is just an anecdote but I kept doing my homework, you know, transcribing. It's great exercise, you know, but it takes one thing, concentration. You need to concentrate, find a quiet place to close your eyes, to listen, and it works. It helped me. Then I finished everything. I became a teacher, whatever. I stopped being a teacher. I was a teacher again. I told you that I took the IELTS. To take the IELTS, that represented a challenge for me because it's more British English. And I was used to American English. That's what I've always heard. I, I mean, I have fun with Bridget Jones and Harry Potter, but that was it. No, I wasn't familiar with it. So what did I do? I was not going to transcribe everything again. That could have helped me. Instead, you know, TV. I watched Downtown Abbey and The Crown. Obviously, <laughs> with subtitles, close captioned, with subtitles in English. So I could hear and I could read at the same time to know what they were saying. A funny thing happened to me when I was taking an IELTS exam, you know, that you find online, and then listening. It asks, you know, you have to write exactly what they say, the words, the keywords. And there was this listening and I heard, I was expecting a number and I heard something like 12, 12 font. And I was like, eh? Two, two elephants, two elephants I heard. Well, two elephants, two elephants. Uh, I got that one wrong. They said 12 tons. I mean, 12 tons, 12 tons. Or I don't know how they say it in British. The thing is, uh, I got it wrong. It reminded me of my time when I was learning. That you can make those mistakes. Uh, it's very funny. Two elephants. I heard two elephants. And it was 12 tons. 12 tons, 12 tons, 12 tons. Okay, yeah, they're not the same, but that's what I heard. Point is, practice makes master. So you keep practicing and you really need to do this actively. Doing actively means, for instance, listening and reading, listening and transcribing, listening 
and repeating. First, just listening. Listening and recognizing those words that you already know, but in context. Around all the little words that are reduced, that are almost not pronounced. And once you can decode those important words from a bunch of not so important words, you can make good notes for TOEFL, for example, in which you need to take lots of notes. But if you don't recognize the words, then you won't be able to write anything. So decoding is the first step. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you. Please share it, subscribe, and see you soon.